Hey, what's up, nerds? So by popular demand, I wanted to do a little showcase of my Nurgle army. This is my most complete army, my favorite army, the army that I've put probably the most effort into all of the paint jobs on. Um, I really, this is like the, the army that I take the most pride in. Anything that I do for this army at this point, I put uh, a lot of effort into compared to uh, my other armies because um, I wanted always to look the best uh, look as best as I can do um, I've gone through repeatedly and as my paint skills have gotten better I've taken the paint up to a new level on the whole army uh, I've done that a couple of times um, so it just is uh, kind of a never-ending project keeps getting better and better and uh, so I thought I would share it with you guys um, I'll start off first with the troops, and then the never-ending parade of heroes. So, right here, we start off with a sampling of my Putrid Blight Kings. Um, I really wanted their armor to pop. So, what I had originally done was, like, a, a yellowish-green on the armor. And when I decided I wanted to make it pop more, then I kind of started highlighting it in yellow. Then that highlight in yellow turned into a blend into the yellow from the green. And then it turned into, well, there's really kind of a green tone at the center, and then it fades out to yellow. And the most prominent color at this point really is the yellow of the armor. Um, this kind of nicely shows the overall um, paint composition of the army. Um, generally, everything has yellow armor. Uh, things like tentacles, cloth, um, other accoutrements on things tend to be purple. Um, and then demon skin will usually be the green. So it's... Um, a nice kind of composition, I think, with the colors that makes it all tie together really nicely. So here we've got some plague bearers. Um, you can see that I've gone through and all of their boils and pimples have been popped out with that same yellow color that I use for the armor. These guys are much heavier on the green side of things, but they do still have some pops of purple in the grass on the bases uh, to help everything blend together, as well as kind of going a little bit more on like like the pinky purple side on their guts and stuff that are hanging out. Uh, both uh, these guys, as well as the Blight Kings, I've got like a million of both. Uh, I'm at 30 Blight Kings and I think like 60, I wanna say, plague bearers um i just didn't think that there was a need to like take a picture of every single one of them so these are just kind of like a sampling of the cool ones um just to give you an idea of what they all look like here we've got some nerglings some happy little guys hanging out um Again, the, they are primarily that green color. Not a lot of yellow really worked into this particular set of models. Um, that said, they also don't see the table that much. So um, they're ones that I concern myself a little bit less with. But needless to say, I still did bring in the purple on the bases. And their boils and such, which are mostly on the backside, are in the yellow. Here we've got uh, some plague drones. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, similar sort of paint scheme to what I did with the plague bearers, since they are plague bearers riding them. The wings on these guys uh, do pull in that purple color, uh, but you can't really tell from you know uh, just a normal photograph. But I did use some color shift paint on the wings to kind of give them that shimmery effect that an insect wing would have. Um, 
used some uh, Nurgle's rot as well on their big noses. Um, these guys are definitely a lot of fun. Unfortunately, they don't see the table as much as I'd like to. Um, I've also got another six of these guys, I believe, uh, over on the shelf. So again, just kind of showing a sampling, not necessarily the entire army. These guys, oh, and unfortunately their bases came out kind of blurry, but... Uh, so two of my Pusquail Blight Lords. The guy on the right is actually a conversion... Um, he was one of the other guys out of the uh, kit with Bloab Rot spawned. Um, one of the other bodies and weapons out of that kit that I grafted onto the torso of one of the Puscoil Blight Lords. Uh, the other guy is pretty standard, just one of the builds that is available, but I really liked that conversion. Um, just a little bit of green stuff to add some extra rolls of fat, and it just blends right in. Looks like he belongs there. Uh, and it comes out really cool. I think the the contrast of the armor, and then again, the purple of the wings, which is a little hard to see in this picture, but uh, also uses the color shift paint on those to uh, really kind of give them a cool effect on the tabletop. And here, just two more of my Puscoil Blight Lords. Not really anything to uh, talk about too much on these guys. Um, they do have some fun stuff on the bases. Um, just to make them a little bit more interesting. They're very tall models. So I kind of wanted to make sure that they were interesting from top to bottom. So I definitely did add some extra stuff on the bases there. Uh, this is just one of my feculent gnarl maws. I do only have two of them, uh, but I just thought I would share that this is the one that I primarily use. I added a bunch of extra nerglings to it. Uh, there's another one hanging out on the backside. So bringing in here the yellow primary color and you know the purple tentacles and... Of course, the green nerglings and green grass uh, hanging out there, bringing the color scheme together for the army. I think it works as a really nice centerpiece. Um, and the way the nerglings kind of hang out on the tree, I really like. It, um, it adds kind of a fun element to it. Here we have my Lord of Afflictions. Uh, this is another conversion um, this guy, you'll notice he is not riding the typical uh, fly from the Puscoil Blight Lords. He has uh, the prehensile proboscis head from the uh, Plague Drone kit uh, grafted on there with some green stuff and some love. Uh, I just wanted him to be a little bit more unique and stand out. Um, so I thought, you know, using that head swap on the fly would definitely make him pop out, be a little bit more interesting. Um, you might notice here, as, as I did on some of my other models, um, this is where I really learned to start doing, uh, bone and horn, um, transitions. You'll see, like, the horns on his shoulder pad. Uh, kind of go from black to white. Um, so that's something that I've worked on a lot on this army, and you'll see much more of that later on. Uh, and again, on this guy, he's got the color shift paint on the wings, as well as his little buddy uh, Nurgling on the ground there. He also has color shift paint on his wings, because why not? The Nurgling needs to love, too. This guy, oh man, I wish he was better because this is such a beautiful model. Um, definitely a lot of fun here. Uh, bringing in the yellow for all of the little pustules and all of that. Um, but it, that shell is just a beautiful sculpt. It was definitely a lot of fun to paint that. Um, I... Part of me wants to get another one of these guys just to paint him again and uh, 
maybe do some conversion on that tree growing out of his back. Because um, that's definitely a fun feature. This guy, just the obligatory uh, Beast of Nurgle. Um, this is probably one of the less good paint jobs in the army. Uh, just going to be real honest about it. Um, he's, he's there. Uh, he almost never gets used. I just have one of them. Um, the scroll is pretty bad right now. There's uh, maybe an occasion where you might want to grab one from summoning. Uh, but most of the time you're getting plague bearers, not him. So that is that on that guy. This guy is a fun and interesting little model. So this was random prize support that I got um, from, I believe, Du Bois GT from something. I don't even remember what year. Uh, and it was just a random Minotaur that I never really knew what to do with. Um, it's a metal model. And what I decided to do was just make him into a Pestagore hero. Um, so I did a little bit of green stuff work. You can kind of see on his left arm there that his left arm looks kind of rotted. Um, and uh, yeah, I just thought it was a fun little addition. He has some additional green stuff work like that on his back just to give him that kind of rotting appearance. So... If I ever venture into Beasts of Chaos to add some Pestigore, um, this guy's kind of going to be the template for what they're going to look like. This guy, one of my favorite conversions in the army. So this is my Harbinger of Decay. Um, I really don't like the original Harbinger of Decay model. It also tends to be kind of hard to come by. So I did a conversion with this and used one of the riders from the Pusquale Blight Lords kit. I believe this was the other rider from uh, the kit that I used for the Lord of Afflictions. Uh, and then a Chaos Knight horse. And I think a head swap as well on this dude. And painted him up. And he blends much better into the army. Um, one of the things that I really don't like about the original sculpt is that he doesn't really look like a rot bringer. He doesn't look like a big fat guy. Um, and this guy is a big fat guy riding a horse, um, as he should be. So the horse doesn't really look sickly, but I think, you know, I chose the one with the, the bone, uh, like the skull head, um, intentionally so that it did still kind of have that feel to it a little bit this guy's another fun little conversion um i had an extra lord of blights so i swapped out his shield swapped out his weapon swapped out his head took the gallows off and threw on one of the uh little pennant sort of things from the Pusquail Blight Lord kit, uh, and just kind of made this guy. Uh, I can run him either as a Lord of Plagues or a Lord of Blights. Um, he was just really kind of fun to make and paint, and doesn't necessarily have a direct purpose, but I liked him. He's fun. He's just kind of a cool project that got thrown together one day. This one is another... Uh, interesting conversion that I got going on here. This guy counts as a Rotbringer Sorcerer. It is um, the uh, oh, the Grot Shaman. I forget what his name is. Um, but, of course, with a head swap, some green stuff work. Um, I believe that's a weapon swap and uh, some tentacles for good measure. So um, he's definitely a fun little uh, creation here that he fits the army, I think, very nicely compared to what you get out of the 
Standard Sorcerer. Um, Standard Sorcerer is also a metal kit. Um, or at least the one I have is metal. I think it's resin now. Um, so not a huge fan of that, although it does get played often instead of this guy now. Um, this guy, another cool conversion. Uh, he counts as the um, Exalted Hero of Chaos. Uh, this was originally the old Archeon on foot model, uh, but I did a little shield swap and weapon swap on him and uh, gave him a little work on his base so that he'd actually stand up properly. Um, and, you know, he became an exalted hero of chaos. This guy is a fun little blender to throw into a fun list, give him a sort of judgment, and uh, he can go blend up some enemy heroes, which is uh, a whole lot of fun to do. And this, of course, is just my standard Rotbringer Sorcerer. Um, I tried some different colors with this guy. Um, I found that doing his robe in any color other than green um, just didn't quite work right. So in order to bring in the yellow and purple, I added some books and scrolls on his base just to kind of continue tying that color theme together throughout the army. And of course, we got Festus the Leech Lord here uh, with all his boils and pus and his guy that he's poisoning, uh, his tentacle holding up the staff. Uh, this was actually one of the first models that I ever did um, with a zenithal highlight and thin coats of paint. So you notice that it does look a little bit different stylistically than a lot of the rest of the army. Uh, all, but it definitely still fits in well, and Festus is kind of an unusual model compared to the rest of the army, so it all kind of ties together and works nicely, I think. Uh, this is just a beautiful model, and it makes me so sad that his rules are bad. Uh, this is the Spoilpox Scrivener. Um, I love that giant mouth and his quill uh, and then all of the detail on those scrolls. It's fantastic and he, it just makes me so sad that his scroll is not good. And then this is our um, Poxbringer, Herald of Nurgle. Um, this is probably the most boring looking of all of the heralds but the most playable one, which is really, really disappointing. Uh, basically painted up in pretty standard Plague Bearer color scheme for this guy. Uh, nothing really too exciting there. Uh, nothing that exciting about this model. He's got some guts hanging out and uh, a long tongue, and that's about it. Over here we got Sloppity Bile Piper, another fantastic model that is really fun to paint and has some really terrible rules. Uh, so GW, get on top of that. Let's fix this in the next book. Like, let's make him have good rules because uh, he was just so much fun to paint. He's a really cool, fun looking model. Um, his lore is cool. Everything is cool about this guy except his war scroll. Uh, biting the big one, so not much we can do. And here I got uh, just a Chaos Sorcerer Lord uh, devoted to Nurgle, of course. Um, this guy's been through a few different iterations of paint jobs, um, but once again, got the uh, books on the ground, um, which... You know, now that I'm looking at it again, I might go through and make those books uh, yellow and purple and bring in some yellow and purple into the rest of the model. Because um, he's not quite in alignment with the paint scheme of the rest of the army at this point. This guy I did a long time ago. Um, so now that I'm kind of taking a fresh look at him... He might need an entire repaint. Um, I think he could definitely use to uh, have 
uh, a paint job that makes him look like he fits more in with the rest of the army. Although he really doesn't get used that often, um, I still like everything to kind of go together nicely and coherently. All right, and this guy, Mr. Tentacles himself, Gut Rot Spume. Um, the tentacles on this guy are super fun to paint. Um, there's a lot of cool detail on this model. He has, like, another mouth in his armpit. Um, super cool and uh, was able to bring in that purple color really nicely in the tentacles. And I love the little detail of one of his tentacles holding the bottom of that axe as well. That's just super cool to me for some reason. Uh, this guy is also one of my favorite in-game models to play with, um, bringing in a bunch of Blight Kings on the board edge. Uh, in your first movement phase is a really great ability. It's a lot of fun to do. Um, so he's a really cool guy, a co really cool looking model, and has some excellent abilities as well. And like when he actually gets into combat, he does some work. So he's definitely one to love. And a guy that just makes everybody a little bit sad. He's Mr. Also Ran, the Lord of Blights. Um, coming in here. Uh, nothing too exciting about this guy. It took me a long time to figure out like how to paint all of those maggots and such in his belly. Um, I think they've kind of come out okay at this point. Um, this guy is... I don't know. Unfortunately, I think this is a little bit of a boring model. It doesn't really excite me that much. Um, but because Blight Cyst is really good, he gets played a lot. Um, so, of course, I have my uh, alternate converted model of this guy that I can use and probably will quite frequently instead of this guy just because it looks a lot cooler. All right, and I believe next we get into the fun stuff. Yes. This is my Vermin Lord Corruptor. Um, this was a lot of fun to paint and work on. Uh, rather than having that um, bit out of the kit that he's kind of uh, Captain Morgan standing on, I built up the base uh, with some uh, cork to get that uh, part of the base raised up. So he's kind of standing on a hill and it's like a cliffside right in front of a big pool of ooze. Uh, and you can't see out of this particular picture, but there's like bubbles and stuff in the ooze, um, which was definitely fun to do. His fur and his skin all um, done in kind of like a greenish brown color. Um, and really like laying into the more brown color of the horns as well to make them look a bit more rotted. Um, one of the things that it's a little bit hard to make out in this particular picture, um, I did some interesting work on his abdomen. So usually vermin lords are pretty ripped up. They've got some serious abs going on. Um, and Nurgle things just tend to not have sweet abs. So I took some green stuff. I gave him a nice big distended stomach with some intestines falling out. Um, so he kind of fits in a little bit better with the general theme of the Nurgle army. Um, so that is definitely a fun little customization that I did on this guy that I really enjoy. It was really kind of proud of that uh, thought that I had on that one. This guy is probably my favorite model in the whole model range. Um, this is Bloab Rot Spawn. I absolutely love uh, the creature that he is riding. Um, I think this is probably my favorite paint job out of my whole army. Um, I spent a lot of time working color back and forth on all of those horns. Uh, I spent so much time on that skin tone and 
you know, making all of like the pinks and purples pop just the right way. Um, it is, it, this was so much fun to paint. Uh, it makes me want to get two more Magath Lord kits and make all three of them. Um, kind of just because I can. Um, Bloab is probably the best of the three right now at least um and he's still really not that good he unfortunately doesn't see a lot of play but i really love the model a lot so he definitely has a special place in my heart even though uh he he, he needs a little bit of love hopefully he gets better in the new book and then here our great unclean one. This guy is another one that I have done a lot of work on over time. Uh, working on his skin tone, making all those boils pop really nicely, getting all of the detail to be as sharp as I can make it. Um, I'm really definitely happy with the way this guy came out in general. Um, he is absolutely a... Uh, centerpiece of the army he's an essential part of a lot of my lists and um yeah so i'm glad that he came out well and then finally we got the big daddy rodigus um i you know similarly to the great unclean one a lot of work done on his skin tone um and i i created um some muddy puddles around him since he is the rain father um and i've got a nurgling hanging out bathing in one of those little puddles and i really liked the rod in this particular model that his rod is like glowing the with the green and yellow um, in like a magical sort of way. Um, I really liked that idea and I think it came out pretty well. I think it executed relatively well on the model. Overall, he's another model that I wish I could play more, but I just don't. Um, I need to have more just fun games where I throw in the models that I like instead of, uh, you know, running the most competitive list. But unfortunately with Nurgle, you're kind of stuck running the most competitive list that you can in order to hang with the middle of the pack. So, um, yeah, that is it for the army. This army was so much fun to paint. I'm still buying stuff for it. Um, I've got a couple of other models. Like, I've got two more Puscoil Blight Lords that are in process that... You know, I pick them up every once in a while when I want something fun to work on. But that is it for now, guys. If you like the video, hit like. Love the army. Love the grandfather. And I will talk to you all later.